it's best what I could do in the time I had. So we're going to drag that there, let that load. And it is a test channel, so there we go. Okay, and do, 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 load, 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 load. Boom. Test the channel. So that is my, that isn't very professional, but it's, it's a good start off. You always want something here. If it's blank, it's, it isn't really stylish and no one's going to want it. So that's a good start off. Now for my emblem, let's go ahead and hit edit. Now I got to go to Google Plus for this. Great, you know. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. I made one for this too. Now this is what everyone's going to see on if they look at your videos, if they see you comment or anything. This is what they're going to see. What is that? I think that's a pop-up. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. Uh, that's good enough. Set profile picture. And I don't want to share it. And there we go. It won't refresh for a bit, I don't think. There it is. Test. So that is my emblem and that is my channel art. So uh, all these I made in uh, Photoshop. Uh, it was pretty easy to set up. It was, I don't know, maybe I spent maybe five minutes on both of them together. Uh, pretty easy to set up. I found a font that I liked, found a background on Google that was copyright free, and then put it together and made it pretty easy indeed. Alright, so let's move on to the next. This was the professionalism of this part. Now the next thing is, is thumbnails. So let's go ahead and uh, go to, or actually we need to upload a video, but before we do that, we need to go to video manager, we need to go to channel settings, and right here. If you scroll down, there's a few settings here that you don't get right off the bat, you're going to have to make them work. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So monetization. Monetization is for earning money off of your videos, but you're not allowed to do this right now if you are a uh, gamer. If you are a gamer upload, like you upload gameplays, you're not able to monetize your videos until you're sponsored by a partner. Otherwise, it's illegal and a bunch of mamma jamma. Anyway, um, only people who's doing like vlogs and stuff like that can earn money off of like AdSense straight from YouTube. That has no like video games in it and whatever. So longer videos, um, you go ahead and hit enable. Um, you got a United States text me verification code, and it'll send you a verification code, which I'll do this here in a minute, but not while you guys are here. Um, there's the external annotations, which you got to do. Just you have to hit the verify button up here at the top, and once it's verified, it'll send you it. And then here's the thing we're looking for: custom thumbnails. So this is the thing that everyone's going to see your videos by. Um, like, here, give me a second, let me go. Don't you be looking at that Victoria's Secret. Anyway, so you see all these different thumbnails, like this guy right here, and, uh, let's, let's go look up my channel. Here, let's see. So here's my channel right here. This is the thing you see on my channel. And these are my thumbnails. Uh, most of them are. Um, anyway, when you look up Commandos of Gaming Pro, you see all my thumbnails that I've made for my past videos. Um, I don't usually put writing on my live stream videos. I usually just find a picture that looks good and post it. But some of them I do put writing like uh, uh, Clan vs. Clan, Clan Wars, There Will Be Blood. Uh, I do post videos like that that have writing in it. But most of the time, um, I usually try to keep them writing free least uh, less work as possible um, but you do want to make them look professional so if it's something descriptive like this video you do need to put writing in it but if it's just like a live stream you don't really need to put any writing in it so back to this so that is your thumbnail so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go set up my thumbnails it might take a minute or two here and I'll be right back okay so now all three of those are now set up all I had to do was hit verify up here in the top corner Ember in, and then it sends you a verification code, six digit code. And once you got the six digit code, you put it in there, and then it submitted it, and then now you're ready. So now you can do custom thumbnails, external annotations, and longer videos that's longer than 15 minutes. So now, after that, we are going to actually, I'm going to show you how to actually put in a thumbnail. So when we hit upload, so this is how you upload a video, and then once you click on that button, you can either 
go through and search for the video or you can have a folder open and just drop the video in there so I'm just gonna find a video real fast drop a video in there three good alright so now since you're here a button should pop up let's see thumbnail selection will appear when the video has finished hmm well usually right here there's a little button um, it's not showing up right now oh, there it is alright so you click on custom thumbnail once you have this open, these are my Skyrim thumbnails. You know what? We'll just use one of them. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, there we go. You click on that, and it's loading, loading, and there it is. So the this is the picture that people will see when they're passing through the side videos, and they'll be like, wow, that's a really cool uh, picture. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So when they click on it, they'll bring straight to the video, and then they'll be able to watch your video. So making sure your thumbnails look very professional is is a key way to get a lot more views and sometimes subscribers see man he put a lot of work into that picture I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to him so make sure you put a lot of work into your pictures and stuff um, to make sure that people actually take you seriously and they actually want to join your videos now the, the next thing is is key you know tags right here tags are very 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 important they're the only way people's actually going to be able to find your videos. If you put, you know, tags that aren't even related to your videos, say you do Call of Duty videos and you're putting in Battlefield tags. Well, only Battlefield people will find your videos and most likely they'll give you dislikes and put rude comments in the section below saying, you know, this is in Battlefield, why are you in the Battlefield selection? So make sure you only put tags that are relevant to your video. So if you're doing Call of Duty, you know you can do FPS, first person shooter, Call of Duty, Ghost, Call of Duty, Black Ops, um, Call of Duty 2013, anything that's relatively relative to your video. Now, a lot of people get bored re-putting in tags for every single video. So what I do is I've made, let me delete that pop-up, I've made a little selection here, let me click on it, where is it at? Need, Call of Duty Ghost, I have a little selection here of all the tags that I have for my Call of Duty videos. And this goes in the description, but I'll talk about that in a bit. These are the tags that go in my Call of Duty video. And all you do is you put them in a Word doc and you put a comma after each one of them. And then you can just repaste this back in there every time. Or you can put it in the default menu. Let me bring this back up. Or you can put it in the default menu. And once you put it in the default menu, every time you hop on the game, it'll automatically pop up. Next thing to do is your description. Now your description is very, very important. They allow you to put a bunch of text. You could literally put a book in there. And what I like to do is I like to put tags in there. They don't really suggest you doing tags, but if you make a sentence or a story out of the tags, then that's fine. Or you can Google the game, which is what I do a lot. I Google the game. Um, say you're doing Call of Duty Ghosts. You know, you'll just, you know, look up Call of Duty Ghosts. COD, G-H-O-S-T, Ghost. Click on that. And then go to like uh, COD Ghost. I didn't want to click on that. Thanks for bringing me to a place I did not want to go back off. So you would want to go to like uh, COD Ghost Wikipedia. And then you would copy things out of here that you think is important like multiplayer. Copy that. Paste that in your description. Then you would come back. Grab some more stuff that you think is important like you know like stuff that's in game modes. Uh, the plot of the game, the storyline if you were playing the campaign and you just copy each one of those parts and paste it into the description because that's relative to what you're actually doing. You're, it's relative to Call of Duty. It's relative to everything. So that has a lot to do with it. Now, biggest thing, naming your title. Naming your title is how people will find your videos and if people want to click on your videos or not. Make it relative to your videos but also don't cut it off where someone who's looking for something completely different might not click on your videos. Make it interesting. Um, if you're in how to's, you know, make sure you have the front where it's how to. Don't put a sentence before the word you're actually wanting in the fine light. If you're doing Call of Duty Ghost games, make sure you have Call of Duty Ghost, the first sentence in front, and then you do, you know, KM Strike. Make sure the Call of Duty Ghost is in the front. Now, if you're doing how to videos, make sure the how to's in the front. How to get a KM in Call of Duty Ghost. Now that's tricky because you have to have Call of Duty Ghost in there and the how to. So what I recommend is you put Call of Duty Ghost and then do how to blah 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 and you know Call of Duty Ghost. So that's basically that end of that. Now the last to get um, basically the last part to get 
people to comment and do stuff on your videos. It's called the call to action. A call to action is when you ask people to like, favorite, and subscribe on your video so you can improve your video, so you can make your video better, and so that you can keep posting videos and so you know people like your content. So I'm going to go ahead and do a call to action to you here in a minute, but first I want to go to one other thing. Comments. You want comments on your videos. More people comment on your video, more views you're going to get because more comments show that your video is getting a lot of activity. Then uh, YouTube will move you up on the search list so you can get more views per comment. Um, I remember on this uh, video that I posted a while back, um, so I posted this one video, I had really, really good gameplay, and I only had like 52 comments on it. Well, I only got like 500 views, alright? Then I posted this other video that I didn't play very well on, and I had, I think it was 250 comments, and I ended up getting 1,000 views. So comments do matter, and likes do too. So make sure that you ask for comments may make up a question for people to ask you in the description below comments do matter and even if they're bad comments even if the person's cussing at you even if he's putting you down even if you know he's saying your channel sucks even if he's anything even bad comments help you out because no matter what that comment is getting you more views and in the end they're helping you out so even if they put a dislike that is helping your channel out it doesn't matter what they do they're bringing more attention to your channel bringing more viewers to your channel and in the end it's making you bigger and that's what you want so I'm gonna go ahead and do the call to action in this video um, well there's one more thing I want to talk about now a lot of people try to do it and I do not recommend doing it a lot of people try to do that uh, sub for sub do not do it because 90 percent of the time you're gonna subscribe to him he's gonna subscribe to you and then you're going to get a dead sub what a dead sub is is it someone who you're subscribed to and they're in your list and then they subscribe to you so you're in their list but they never come check out your videos and what's the point of having a sub if they're not going to check out your video so do not do sub for sub and it's kind of guaranteed it's kind of said as cheating basically um, box for box is fine because it's you and a friend or you and someone trying to link viewers to each other and that's fine Another way to get a bunch of views and a bunch of subscribers is to do dual streams. Hi, I'm Katherine Askelsrud, a Senior Product Marketing Manager on the MSDN Subscriptions team. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the great benefits that come with MSDN Subscriptions. There are lots of useful benefits that come with a subscription. You probably already know about or have heard about the massive library of Microsoft software and servers that are included. But did you know about the cloud benefits, training, and tech support? For the next few minutes, I'll take you through the easiest way to find out the benefits included in your subscription, as well as walk you through some of our subscriber favorites. So let's get started. First, benefits can vary on subscription level. The easiest way to find out which benefits you have included in your subscription is to log on to the MSDN subscriber portal. The My Account page shows all of the benefits available to you in addition to subscriber downloads. The fastest way to get to your My Account page is to open a browser and go to aka.ms WAC My MSDN Benefits, and you'll land on the My Account portal. Now, if you're already in the subscriber portal downloading software, all you need to do is click on the My Account heading, and you'll end up on the My Account page. So here I am looking at a Visual Studio Ultimate with MSDN subscription, and if I scroll down the page, I can see all the various benefits that come with my subscription level. Now, we always keep this page up to date with the latest benefits that you receive, so you'll want to check back regularly in case you happen to miss our announcements. The other thing that's important to know about this page is that none of your benefits come pre-registered or activated, so you'll actually need to come to this page to launch the activation and registration processes. So for instance, here you can see to activate Microsoft Azure or to pick up a code for the Windows and phone stores. So check back often to see what the latest benefits are. You might also want to bookmark this page. Now that we've covered where to find your benefits, let's talk about some of the subscriber favorites. First, subscribers receive Visual Studio Online benefits. Visual Studio Online is based on the capabilities of Team Foundation Server with additional cloud services. It's the online home for your development projects, and it's always up to date and securely accessible anywhere with an internet connection. Depending on the MSDN subscription level, you can get access to 
web-based test case management, cloud-based load testing, agile portfolio management, request and manage feedback, continuous deployment to Microsoft Azure, and more. Check out visualstudio.com for a full list of the features you get as an MSDN subscriber. Another cloud benefit subscribers have access to is Microsoft Azure. You receive up to $150 a month to use on any dev test service you want on Azure, and that adds up quick, up to $1,800 a year of cloud credit. In addition to the monthly credit, MSDN subscribers also get exclusive discounted dev test rates, cloud use rights for most MSDN software, and access to an MSDN image gallery with pre-configured virtual machines. You're probably wondering how far the credit will go. That, we get that question a lot. So let's go over some quick examples. Let's say you have $100 a month credit. With that, you can run three VMs for 16 hours a day, or 80 VMs for 20 hour load test, or 50 HD Insight nodes for 10 hours, or up to 100 websites and database. So as you can see, you can do quite a bit. These credits are a great way to get started and play around with Azure, so take advantage of them. If you happen to use all your credit for the month, don't worry, your credit resets on your monthly anniversary date. At some point, you may also want to work in Azure with multiple teams or separate out projects. No problem. Subscribers also get exclusive Azure to dev test pay-as-you-go subscriptions with the same great dev test rates and cloud use rates. You can set up as many of these as you'd like. We've also heard from our subscribers that it's important for you to keep your skills up to date with the latest technology. I think you'll be really excited about one of our newest benefits, Pluralsight Training. Based on your subscription level, you'll receive 10, 20, or 30 course Pluralsight subscriptions. Topics range from Visual Studio, Azure, .NET, and more. Plus, they'll be regularly refreshed so you'll always have the latest. So check that out and make sure to take advantage of this great resource to help you take your skills to the next level. Now, for the rare occasions when you hit a technical roadblock in your project, we've got you covered with technical support benefits. First, subscribers receive two to four professional technical support incidents, each valued at $259. These incidents will enable you to speak directly with a support professional and will help you quickly get back to work. You also have the option to submit your questions or issue on MSDN forums. Subscribers receive priority support in select for forums, meaning if the community hasn't responded to your question within two days, we will. Either option you choose, you'll be able to get your project unstuck quickly and move forward. These are just a few of the benefits you have access to as an MSDN subscriber, on top of the subscriber downloads you already know and love. To find out the other benefits included with your subscription and to... Hello friends, my name is Akshay and today I will show you how to increase your YouTube views on Google Chrome. First you have to download Google Chrome browser and you have to type here google.com.in and you have to type here Chrome Web Store. Now you have to click on the first link and you have to see here the search box in there and you have to type here auto refresh plus. Now you have to search that. Now you have to click on this extension this is the icon of the software you have to click on the add to chrome i have already added to this on my so uh, on my chrome so i don't need to install again so you have to again type here google.com.in and you have to type here youtube and you have to click on youtube now click on my channel and you have to choose any video of your channel example I can choose this video software sorry video now you can see my views is 13 I can increase it into 20 views so you can see that now you have to click on that and click on any time there you can refresh click on start and wait you can see the timer on there four three two one zero five four three two one zero now you can see my views is fourteen two one sixteen views three two one 16 views 5 4 3 2 1 17 views 5 4 3 
two, one. Now you can see 18 views. Now you can see my views is 19, 21. Now you have to stop the refresh, click on stop and see your views, 21 views. So guys, thanks for watching this video on YouTube. Please drop a like and subscribe my channel on YouTube. Bye bye guys. Thanks for watching this video.